Stephanie Milkey here, a.k.a. Keto Mom, or often called mom, sis, Steffi, daughter, wife, aunt, and friend. Just like many of you, I carry a lot of titles. My favorite title is mom. I should probably say wife, which takes a lot of my time. But let's be honest. If you want to do something and do it well, you will make the time for it. Commitment is hard because we find ourselves overcommitted. But when you practice prioritizing, you will find out what is actually important and what you can let go. With the Keto Mom Podcast, you will learn together how to manage our time, commit to the most important things in life, and I will equip you with the tools you need to feel qualified each step of the way. My name is Stephanie Milkey, and welcome to the Keto Mom Secrets Podcast. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Keto Mom page. My name is Stephanie, and we are working on your Monday morning mindset, and here's the book that we're going through. Uh, We are on chapter... I believe we're on chapter three. Uh, But before we do that, tell me where you're tuning in from. Oh, we're on chapter three. Yes. We're on chapter three. All right. Hey, it was a super fun weekend. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. There's mostly moms, (laughs) or I'll just say women on here. But if you are watching uh, and you're a father, happy Father's Day. Late. I hope you had a great weekend. We celebrated with... Our, my husband and my dad, and then my husband, and we just had a really great, peaceful uh, weekend. All right, couple things before we dive into the book. First of all, if you're brand new, post new below. Good morning, everybody. I see you popping on. Say good morning. Um, we have an event that's tonight and tomorrow. So real quick, and it's and it's. I was gonna say it's super free. I woke up this morning and my husband looked at me and I have, you know how like you have like lines across your face. He was like, did you sleep good? (laughs) And I just, I was so tired. I don't know why I must've played real hard. I was really tired this morning. I'm drinking my ketones. I've been reading and reading some more. Good morning. Good morning, Cassie. Good morning, Shelly. All right. So At any point in time, if you're brand new, good morning, Melinda. You can always post new below. You can always go to ketomomsecrets.com. If you're brand new and you're looking for how to get started, recipes, book clubs, all the books that we've gone through over the last two years. But we do have an event tonight. And just so you know, all it is, is it's a virtual event. It starts at 6 o'clock Eastern. So it's 6 Eastern, 5 Central. That would be 4, 3 Pacific. All you have to do is tune in, register, and all in its science and research around ketones, the keto diet, around intermittent fasting. You're going to hear some incredible insight from scientists and doctors. It's going to be great. It's it's called Keto Academy. It's one of my favorite events because it's going to help build your belief in so many different things. So if you want to be on that event, I can personally send you Uh, the information. So just post event below and I'll send you the little visual so you can register. It's tonight and tomorrow, both in the evenings. I guess it's more evening on the Eastern coast, Pacific coast, pop in an earbud and listen to it. Uh, It's going to be great. There's not a replay, but I promise you, anybody can watch it. You, anybody can watch, watch it with you. So, um, it's about ketones, but not just ketones. It's about the keto. It's going to cover all things, low carb food, intermittent fasting. I promise you it's going to be amazing. Oh, Crystal's like, I signed up. I love it. Kathy, I'll send you the event. So post event below and we'll chat. Otherwise, here's what we're talking about today. If you have not been following along in this book, it's about the compound effect of small habits every single day. So he tells a ton of stories and I'm actually gonna say, this book is really amazing. I think I say that about every book I read. I actually listened to, I was listening to, actually, I've probably listened to five podcasts this weekend. And, (coughs) goodness gracious, I'm so sorry. And we have a, like a mastermind event, a group of people that we meet with once a month. So we had that this weekend. And one of the speakers, he's our friend. Oh, maybe it was him. Maybe it was somebody else. Anyways, it was said this, two things that will change your life. And I would say outside of taking it spiritually, outside of God, two things that will change your life are the books that you read and the people that you're around. And he said that, and I'm like, man, that's totally true. Like what has legitimately changed my life and my thinking 
and truly the like helps me go after things that you know whether I want it or my family or the things that we want to pursue in life is learning from other people oftentimes people will say well you usually have to hit rock bottom before you change right sometimes you know whether it's in your health if it's your health and your fitness related whether it's financially or relationships people will just go to the worst and they say well they're gonna have to hit rock bottom before they change or maybe somebody saying that about you I'm gonna tell you you don't have to because if you can dive in and learn from people that have already gone before you and if you can dive in and learn from uh, books and the people that you're around and find a mentor and find a new group of people that are actually pursuing better in their life you don't have to get at your worst before you start becoming better does that make sense so oftentimes I hear this said a lot I hear I hear speakers and some of my mentors and friends that we're really close to that are pursuing greatness in their life first of all it's not selfish Second of all, you were created for greatness. Third of all, there are things that you're meant to do, right? But you can't do them if you're stuck in this rat race of negativity. And so, you know, I hear this said all the time. I'm sure you've heard it said that you become like the top five people that you hang around with. You become like your peer group. You become like those that you're around 95% of the time. And I used to think, Oh, that's so mean to say though, because what if it's people's friends and what if, and, and I just thought, you know what? You might have to find a new friend group. You might have to find a new group of people to learn from, to grow from, to be around. And it's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you need to unfriend the people that are closest to you, but if you truly want better and you're not growing over here, uh, for example, sometimes you've heard, well, I shouldn't say you've heard this said. You've got four alcoholics over here and you're their friend and you're like, that's not going to be me. Who's going to be the fifth? You're like, well, that's a little harsh. Sometimes some of this stuff has to be a little harsh, right? You've got four people over here and they're your, you know, your closest friends and you're hanging out with them. They don't take care of their health. So you're like, I've got to lose the weight. I want to feel better. We're going to talk about the power of your why in a second. Uh, Who's going to be, are you going to change all four people? Or are you going to become more like them? Are you going to make excuses, maybe go out for some more drinks, skip the gym? You become like those people that you're around. Super important just to pay attention. It's good awareness. All right. <clears throat> the chapter is called Habits. And here's what he says. He goes, we are what we repeatedly do. Our habits, right? <clears throat> An inquired, okay, sorry. So, he talks about uh, a story of a man riding a horse. The man is galloping quickly on his horse. He goes, it appears that he's going somewhere very, very important because the horse is like focused and the horse is moving along. And so a man standing alongside the road shouts, hey, where are you going? And the rider on the horse says, I actually don't know. Ask the horse. He goes, this is a story of most people's lives. They're riding the horse of their habits with no idea where they're headed. It's time to take control of the reins and move your life in the direction of where you really want it to go. Not where other people want it to go or, you know, we've talked about not blaming, shaming, or justifying, you know, your past. But taking, this book, last chapter was about taking 100% ownership of your next steps. He goes, 95% of everything that we do and everything that we think and everything that we feel are achieved in results of learning, of learned habits. <clears throat> and here's what he says. There's, you learn good habits and you learn bad habits, both the same. A daily routine builds, uh, build, a daily routine built on good habits is a difference that separates most people's success among anyone else. And so he dives into lots of different things. And I'm, and I would encourage you, like if your goal is to truly, if you're like, listen, I need to create systems. I need to understand how this works. This is a great book to get and actually physically read it cover to cover. But he says this, I don't know why I'm so, <coughs> well, I'm not going to blame it on air quality. It might be. Or it's just a, well, all right, ready? You're like, yes, Steph, I'm ready. It's you. Okay. He goes, with enough practice and repetition, any behavior, good or bad, becomes automatic over time. That means that even though we develop most of our habits unconsciously, 
we can consciously decide to change them. It stands to reason that since we've learned every habit that we have, we can unlearn them. And so what he's going to do is he tells a ton more stories and basically he's going to get down to helping you realize that uh, having awareness is key. <clears throat> he says it's time to wake up and realize that the habits that you indulge in could compound your life into a disaster. I'm going to show you this picture. Have you guys ever seen this before? So the airplane started here in California. See the bottom line, or the bottom one? And with what he says is in an airplane, with one degree shift, so as they set the course, 1% off can change the complete trajectory, and, it, and it, you end up 150 miles off course with one degree shift, one degree in the airplane. So where it was supposed to go was New York City. One degree shift either takes it to Albany, New York, or Delaware. And that's the same for your life. You're like, wait, I don't get it. Here's where you're at, and you either make a one degree shift, and it could be <clears throat> over the course of time. It could be skipping the gym. That's one degree you're going. It could be uh, the food that you choose, the excuses of didn't pack a lunch, so I'm going to go out to eat consistently over time. It could be skipping uh, your reading, like one degree, one degree will 100% take you off course, good or bad. Well, right, in this case, it's bad because you're not hitting your course at all. He says one single poor habit, which doesn't look like much in the moment, can ultimately lead you miles off course. And so he goes, here's what most people don't understand is they want to get healthier. They want to get uh, stronger. They want to lose the weight. They want to feel better. And what they realize, and, and often I have people ask me this, please give me some motivation. Please help me. Give me some motivation, Stephanie. I have people message me every day. Can you just give me a little motivation so that I can go do what I need to do? And, I, and I'll kind of go back to this. He goes, here's what we need to forget about. Most people think they need willpower. He goes, it's not willpower. Motivation is temporary. Motivation is great. Reading a book, listening to a, a pumped up song, listening to a podcast before you go to the gym or before you prep your meals or go for the walk or whatever. He goes, forget willpower. It's time for your why power. Your choices are only meaningful when you connect them to a desire and a dream. You've got to want something and know why you want it in order for you to keep going on those small steps every single day when nobody else celebrates you and nobody else sees it and when you're like, nobody saw me put down the donut, but you did. Nobody saw me not grab all of the dad treats at church yesterday, but I don't need to be celebrated, but you can celebrate yourself, right? But it's the why power. Why do you want what you want? That's the ultimate question for today. Why do you want, why are you here? Why are you on the Keto Mom page? If you have a goal or a dream or a vision of something greater, why do you want it? Is it because you're going on vacation in a couple months, which is fine, or your daughter's getting married, or a lot of class reunions? I have people who are like, listen, I've got to show up at a class reunion, right? What's your why? Yes, Anna, what is your why? Because that will help you Keep going in the midst of those small steps every single day that don't seem like they're doing a lot, but over the course of time, 100% will. You've got to want to get up and go for years, not just a couple weeks, right? If you do it for a couple weeks and you get to the swimsuit body or the, or the uh, what's it, class reunion, like, or the wedding, that's fine. Don't complain when you either gain the weight back or you end up in the same spot six months later because you just let yourself go. The power of your why is what gets you to stick through the grueling, mundane, and laborious days. All of the hows will be meaningless until you, until your why is powerful enough to keep you going. All right. So the last thing he says is, uh, he gives an example. He says, if I were to give you, let me make sure I phrase it right. He goes, if I were to give you Let's see. He goes, if I were to put a 10 inch wide, 30 foot long plank on the ground and say, hey, 
if you walk this length of the plank, I'll give you $20. Of course you would do it, right? He goes, but if I took that same plank and I put it on the rooftop, like a bridge between two 100 story buildings, would you do it for $20? So he puts a plank on the ground. This is the power of the Y, right? He puts a plank on the ground. If you walk across the plank, I'll give you 20 bucks. Of course you're like, okay, whatever, sure. Give me $20, I'll go grab a coffee. No, you'll grab some ketones. Then he puts that plank, same plank, 100 feet up, 100 stories up as a bridge between two buildings. And he goes, here, I'm going to give you $20. Walk across that plank. You're like, you crazy? Why would I do that for $20, right? Maybe you guys have seen this. He goes, now, he goes, I put the plank across that, but let's just say this. He goes, I'm not going to give you $20, but you're standing on one building the other building is on fire and your child is on the other side, would you walk across that plank to get to your child, right? He goes, of course you would. So he's just giving you examples of like what a why can do for you. It seems extreme, I know, right? He goes, like the burning building has your child on it and you can for sure bet you're gonna do anything that you can physically to get your body over there to get your kid. That's a why, right? You might be like, oh, good grief, Steph. Like, my why to lose weight probably isn't a big enough why. It is for you. Like, I think people underestimate, like, I just want to feel healthier. I was just thinking about this the other day. I actually have really been listening to women speak. I've been listening to uh, how they feel like they look. I've been observing the amount of things that, and I say women because it's mostly women. And... I was like, man, I want to help women age well. How do you, how do we age well? Not how do we try to look like we're 20 when we're 40. Not how do we try to get that 20 year old body back because I've birthed four girls. Like there's an aspect of, I don't have to settle and I don't have to say, I'm never going to get in that mindset where I'm like, oh, I'm 40. This is how I'm going to look or I'm going to blame it on some other physical things I can work on, but how do we age well, right? And how do we love our bodies? Not because, um, like, I don't, I don't need to go and look 20. My face, like, th there's an end date for everybody. Like, nobody gets to skip death, right? So as you age and we try to combat, like, yes, I color my hair, uh, I, pay, I put on some makeup. We can age well and we can do things to look to like, there's like vanity, which I know you all know. And then there's also like, I'm going to embrace the age that I'm in and I can age well because I know that food is important. And if I choose the right foods, I'm going to age well. I'm going to feel better. I'm going to be able to play with my children and my grandchildren. I'm going to be able to go for walks instead of having to sit down. I'm going to age well by taking care of my body and realizing that while it might be uh, hard right now to work on strength train training and gaining muscle, I know that one of the first things that goes away as I get older is muscle. So if I want to age well, I need to hire a trainer. <clears throat> I need to understand the power of muscle preservation. And I'm going to age well because I'm going to have somebody train me and keep me accountable to keep building muscle so that I don't... I don't become susceptible to easily broken bones. Does this make sense? This might seem super extreme. I want to age well in my mindset to go, I don't have to fight the aging process, but I can do it well. I'm not going to dive into like, there's some things I would say about a lot of things that people do. Listen, if you decide to do that, that's fine. Maybe I'll regret it when I'm really wrinkly. Uh, how about this? A lot of aging well starts in your mindset, right? Aging doesn't have to be bad. And having a, a mom body or like having a certain way that let's say your stomach looks, I have some moms that are so frustrated. I'm like, listen, you've birthed babies and it's okay that you don't look the same way that you did prior to birthing babies because look at the miracles that your body can do and you can work on feeling better there are certain ways that you can dress to feel well. Of course we can lose weight, but we have like this women, women, 
you, it's okay that you don't look the same way that you looked before you were married or when you were dating. It's, you can do it well, but let's work on doing it well up here and the rest. So anyways, all right, that is the book that we're going through. I heard my husband walk in the door, so I'm going to end the live, but this is the book that we're going through. Good morning. Hi, babe. And Justin, I have to go make some eggs. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Your presence matters. I am sorry. Let me rephrase that. I get to go make some eggs. <laughs> they just got done working out. Uh, this is a book that we're going through. Let me think more on what I was just talking about, aging well and what that looks like. Reach out with questions. You can always go to ketomomsecrets.com. Ask your questions below. Tune in later and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.